It's Water Wednesday, <laughs> uh, doing ice water for December, and today we look at the second Ice Age movie to be made in 3D, Ice Age Continental Drift. Now, this is actually a water movie taking place out on the prehistoric ocean. Overall, it is the fourth in the series. I guess it's Ice Age 4. I'm not sure it's necessary to see these in order, although they do build on the previous stories. I noticed at least two jokes that referenced the previous movie. And But wow, what a treat it was to see this movie. This is exactly what I hope to see in a 3D cartoon. A film that reaches out and pulls you real close by the collar and tells you, hey, you're looking at me and nothing else. Now, I thought the previous one was fun, with respectable 3D, better than average for the year it was made, but this one just relishes being in this new stereo skin. The close-ups of the oregan... Um, <laughs> pardon me, um, orangutan? No, orangutan. Is it orang orangutan? Orangutan. Of the orangutan pirate are terrific, with his almost porcupine fur bristling out into negative space. And the toss-outs at the camera are ever-present, and yet somehow still feel consistent with the narrative. Eye candy, but it never out of place. I think that might be because the story is a confrontational one, so a stereo field that's ever threatening to attack you uh, delivers the perfect feel for all the danger here. What makes this especially good is not just that they push the field harder, though that is fun, but the angles they choose to film these scenes in uh, are a step above the last one. So many shots you can easily imagine a rectangle from the subject's face or body in the foreground to something that acts as an anchor in the background. And it's these shots that use the physical space of the location to make a polygon and then just sort of turn that at an ever slow uh, bit of an angle and... It just gives it a naturally uh, poppy feel. Many of the shots feel 3D, even when you see them flat. And the great thing about these type of shots is it doesn't actually need very much stereo to really feel amazing because your eyes are already attempting to pull it out. But it does have plenty of stereo, mostly in the foreground. There's a little attention. Uh, not a lot of attention to the deep background. But there are some very nice ocean shots. They get tossed around in a very impressive storm. But even when they're still, we are treated to some nice vistas of gentle waves. As I mentioned on the last video, Ice Age was the dollar store of CGI. But here, they seem to have upped their game considerably. I... Looking at these oceans, I almost expected J.J. J. Abrams to uh, fly a spaceship out of this water, or a fleet of them, or knowing him, a galaxy of them, like rags out of a magician's mouth. <laughs> now, uh, on top of all the stereo fun, Ice Age continues to impress me with how smartly written it is. This one is an incredibly fun movie about abandonment. How is that possible? What's more interesting is it isn't just the premise, which is a harrowing example of how life can change in a moment, kind of similar to that movie Bait I watched a couple weeks ago. But there's also Sid, who we learn is abandoned by his family, and Lewis, who is rejected by Peaches. There are multiple continental drifts at work here, and can we stop them from pulling us apart? All right, on next Wednesday, we'll look at Ice Age, a mammoth Christmas special. Ha <laughs> ha.